Um, we're going to start with the Alabama Crimson Tide. 14-1 last year. 8-0 in the conference. 9-0 if you count the SEC title game. Uh, but the last one was a doozy. Returning starters, they got six back on offense, seven back on defense. Experience is number 86 returning nationally, number nine in the conference. Uh, but that doesn't seem to matter with this team for whatever reason. The over-under, now these were the opening lines, like the opening at Caesars, whatever it was. Um, over 11 and a half was plus 250. And the under was minus 300. So it was like, all right, well, you got big juice on 11 and 1. And you got, like, you're giving up a bunch on 11 and 1. That's right. But you gain a lot if they go 12 and 0 again. That's pretty crazy. Nick Saban, 146 and 21 in 12 years at Alabama. He brings in offensive coordinator Steve Sarkeesian and defensive coordinator Pete Golding was promoted uh, on the team. He was the co defensive coordinator anyway last year. Uh, but now he is the sole one. Tosh LaFoy goes to the NFL. Uh, the offensive coordinator, Mike Loxley, goes to Maryland. Uh, they've got a total of seven new assistants. And I did not write my notes down. I think it was like they've had 35 assistants in the past like six years. I mean, it's just, it's absurd. Um, Tua, Tonga Valoa, and the entire wide receiver core returns. Running backs, Najee Harris and Brian Robinson. They're replacing... Uh, three offensive linemen, and a tight end. Uh, they lost some pretty good tight ends. Can LeBron Ray or Fedarian Mathis replace Kenan Williams? That is the question for the defense. Uh, the secondary is going to be much more experienced this year. They started some young guys, and it bit them in the national championship game. There are always holes to fill with this team, but this program is, and they have been for a while, they reload as opposed to rebuild. Uh can they keep building after having, uh, here we go, 28 different assistants since 2015? Can they keep going at this pace? I don't know the answer to that. I've got them at 12-0. and 0. Um, You know, I, the schedule is pretty light this year. Yep. They get LSU at home. They've got to play at Auburn. they got to play at Texas A&M. they got to play at South Carolina. Uh, but non-conference, they've got Duke, New Mexico State, Southern Miss, and Western Carolina. They play at Mississippi State. Uh, they've got Tennessee, Arkansas, Ole Miss at home. It's you know it, you you don't see a lot of a lot of potential landmines. You only got three games that matter on the whole schedule. So at A and M, you could absolutely lose that, but that is after a bye week. You've got LSU at home. Again, after a bye week. And you've got at Auburn the week after you play Western Carolina. Uh, at Mississippi State, depending on what Tommy Stevens is. Yeah, we need to see State. This State team's going to look way vastly different, different. Yeah. Than, than what last year's State team looked. Or any team that we've seen from State in the last decade. Yeah. Uh, tell me your thoughts. I mean, I, I've, I've got them 12-0. and I've got them 8-0. Uh, I, I know this is going to know this is gonna sound crazy. I know it's going to sound like it's hater. It's really, really not. I got them 10-2. and two. And I have them 10 and 2 for a very specific reason. I think that all of the player turnover and all of the coaching turnover at some point in time will come back to bite you. Yeah. And 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 I think I know you just reload as, at Alabama and, and not, you know, and not rebuild. I'm not saying a 10 and 2 is not a rebuilding year. I think it would be a disappointment for this team. No doubt. No doubt. Um, and that's I, what's crazy. They they have not won less than 11 games in the regular season since 2010. Yeah. LSU hasn't beaten Alabama in a long time, and they don't beat them often. But when they have beat them, they've, they've beaten them at Alabama. Yeah. So that that's not it's not impossible. I think A&M is going to be the the class of this conference and and a surprise team this year. Maybe not really a surprise team. But I think they're going to be really good. I think their schedule is just unbelievably hard. But I think they're going to be an exceptional team going to a and M. I I think both teams will be undefeated for that game. a and has got a bow just before that game as well. So it's not like Alabama has any kind of distinctive advantage. Now, a and M has got uh, Arkansas the week before that. I'm looking at it right here. a and M has a bye week and then Alabama. Bye week and then a and M. I don't know what you looked at. But they have Arkansas, then a bye week, then Alabama. Interesting. 
So that's it. Mine has the bye so week I don't, on October twelfth. I, I don't. I don't know that 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 changes much, and I like a And M. I think they could lose that game. I think they could lose that Auburn game easily because it's at Auburn, and that is a big rivalry. We've seen average Auburn teams beat Bama. We've we've seen them get rolled by Bama. I actually think this Auburn team is going to be pretty good. So, yeah. I think ten and two, and I don't know that that has anything to do with much other than Alabama has a lot of unknowns. We all assume that they're all studs, but yeah. they're still unknown. They're unproven. And then I'm going to tell you one guy that's not going to scare me at all. Tua Tungavalo is incredible. Judy might be the best player in all of college football. Okay. Yeah. You, you could easily have the number one and number two picks in the NFL draft on the same side of the ball. But Steve Sarkeesian ain't scaring a damn person. Yeah. Okay. Well, I right. think that is a mistake hire. Now, they could be the best offense in the world and they could lose zero games. I don't know that Sarkeesian should get credit for that. I think everybody who sat in that chair has done well. Yeah. I think if they go 10 and 2, I think a lot of that has Sark's name all over it. Okay, I can believe that. I, you, you've got an OC now that I firmly believe is more of a guy who, who I don't trust at a job than I do, which rarely happens with Nick. Yeah. And then and then there's just so much other transitioning and turnover. What you got going for you is Nick's never going to let the defense ever struggle. They're, yeah. they're going to be the most prepared defense in all of college football. Every game they play, they're not going to be outcoached by anybody. And you have, if he's not the best quarterback in all of football, he's the second best quarterback in all of college football. Yeah. And you 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 have in my eyes, who I think is probably the best receiver in football and yeah. maybe the best college player in football. Yeah. The, those things, and then the stable of running backs that are going to replace the running backs that you lost, it's just a different name every year. New Jersey, run out there, blow through guys. That stuff, that stuff's just happening. I think Auburn's going to be able, they're not going to be afraid of you. LSU's not going to be afraid yeah. of you. a and not going to be afraid of you. Winning all of those games, I just think there's going to be a mistake somewhere. I can understand it. I can understand it. That's all. That's all. I, not a knock. I know how them people are going to come at me. They hadn't lost two games in God knows how long. 2010. I just, I just think at some point in time, you, you can't just keep taking bricks out of the out of the castle and expect it to stand forever. Yeah. Okay. And, and ten and two is not falling to six and six. No, 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 no. You no. know, it's uh, ten and two still very respectable, but would be a disappointment for this oh, program yes. right now.